Hey everyone here from TunnelVision TV and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to create your own stop motion videos uh, using an application called Dragon Frame. So before we start you basically need a few things um, to do stop motion. You need a camera, something like a DSLR, I'm using a Canon 5D Mark II and um, then you need a USB cable that you can actually connect your camera to your computer, to your Mac or to your PC um, so that the software can actually control your camera and then obviously you need some sort of character and a story or a script um, and that's basically all with those things you can create your own stop motion videos um, really fun to do it takes a bit of time but it's actually really cool to do them so when you open up dragon frame you get this window and then we're going to click on create a new scene and let's just call this uh, stop motion and scene number that's fine click on ok and um, then you need to just specify a folder on your machine where you want to save this so that's fine i'm going to click on choose and um, that's basically going to open up the application. So first of all, it's going to analyze your um, camera. It's just going to connect to it and it's going to give you a live uh, view basically of your camera. So there you can see um, it's actually live at the moment. And um, there I've got a little character. And um, then you've got some tabs here at the top. You've got your animation, you've got your cinematography, and then you've got your audio. And in this tutorial, I'm not really going to go into audio. I'm just going to show you how to actually shoot and uh, record your stop motion. So um, first, what you need to do is you need to go to the cinematography tab. And this is basically where you're going to set your um, camera settings, like the exposure, white balance, all of those things. Okay, so as you can see, it's a little bit dark. And um, currently, my shutter speed is set to one second. And um, this slider is my aperture, it's set to 11. And then you've got your ISO as well. So obviously if I set this to 800, it can make it a bit brighter. But I'm gonna bring it down to about 400 um, to just get a clean image out of my camera. And um, then you can obviously set your uh, aperture to something like four. That's gonna give you a really shallow depth of field, even if you go to something like two, and if you set your uh, shutter speed to maybe something like 30, it's going to give you a really shallow depth of field. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't want it. Um, so for this tutorial, I don't really want a very shallow depth of field. So I'm going to set my aperture to around, let's say, F9. So that's going to give me a nice and wide uh, depth of field. Okay, and then obviously I need to set my, uh, my shutter speed to something like maybe just under one second. Everything is nicely and exposed. Now, when you set your um, aperture to something with a very wide uh, depth of field, you're not really going to see that wide depth of field in the um, in the viewer. Okay, next I'm just going to set my focus. So you can click on focus check here and um, you can basically drag it around. And um, I'm just going to try and set my focus on my character. I know I'm going to have a very wide depth of field, so I'm not really going to worry about that too much because I know everything is basically going to be in focus. And um, then you can go out of that. And then when you're happy with those settings, we're going to go down to these ones here at the bottom. And um, this is basically where you set your image quality. So currently mine's set to ma uh, medium fine JPEG. You can go with raw if your camera shoots raw, but I think it's a bit of an overkill for um, stop motion or the stuff that I'm doing. So I'm just going to go with medium fine JPEG. Okay, and then very importantly, your white balance, you don't want to set this on automatic because it might actually change uh, during the shots. Um, it's going to try and analyze the frame and it's going to set the white balance automatically. So usually just try and set it to something that looks good. Obviously, if we set this to tungsten, um, this might be, you can see it looks a little bit blue. So for my lighting situation, I'm going to set it to daylight. Um, that looks a little bit better. Another thing to be aware of is to try and keep your lights or your lighting environment very constant because if you may be shooting next to an open window and you've got sunlight coming in, that sunlight's going to change over time and it might um, introduce some flicker into your stop motion. So try and block out your windows if you're shooting during the day. Um, have some lights that's constant, maybe some LED lights and um, yeah, just work in a constant um, lighting environment that's going to give you the best results. Okay, so once you're happy with your exposure and your focus and your um, all these picture style settings, we're going to go back to the animation tab. And this is basically where you're going to record your animation. Okay, so as you can see, I can move my little character around here, get a live view of that. So I'm going to start him off right there. And here at the bottom, you can set your frames per second. And for stop motion, I like to use 12 frames per second. That means you don't have to do like 24 um, frames per second. Obviously, it's more work takes longer so 12 is usually a good number 
um, and um, then I like to set this um, this is basically your image mask and I like to set this to 16 by 9 it just gives you that nice widescreen TV aspect ratio uh, you can go in here and you can change this you can see that uh, if I just drop this down it gives you a nice and like a very wide cinematic look um, but i like to use 16 by 9 it's not really going to crop your your images or your photos it's just going to give you a guideline so you can always go in afterwards and change that aspect ratio when you're working um, in your editor like premiere pro or after effects okay so once you're happy with your crop i'm just going to enable uh, this view if you click on this little button here it's going to give you your timeline or your sequence and um, this is basically where you can see the frames that's being recorded and we can also delete frames i'll show you how to do that um, and then this little slider here this is basically your onion skinning so that you can see the frame before or the frame after um, it's going to give you a nice little overlay i'll show you how to use that as well so um, if we're ready to take the first photo basically you just press enter on your keypad um, on the keyboard so it's the one on the right hand side of the keyboard just press that once and the camera is going to basically shoot a frame and there you can see we've recorded that one frame okay now i'm gonna just take the slider i'm gonna move it up this way this is my onion skinning so now you can see if i bring in my hand it's kind of be um, kind of um, transparent and the cool thing is now if i move my character forward i'm just gonna push him slightly forward you can see you can see the previous frame basically and it gives you an indication of how far you need to move your character all right, so if you're ready to take the next frame, I'm gonna press enter again. Okay, so basically if I just use my arrow keys, my keyboard, you can see the difference between those two frames. Okay, I'm gonna to go to my, um, my active frame again where I'm gonna take the next picture. So I'm gonna just move this guy a little bit forward, press enter. Okay, and I'm just gonna carry on like this. So I'm just gonna fast forward this and just record a couple of frames. Okay, so let's say you want to preview the um, animation that you recorded. Basically, you've got these two yellow um, lines that you can drag. This is your in and your out point. So let's say you want to just preview that section. Just pull those uh, in and out frames to the section that you want to preview and press spacebar on your keyboard. Um, and it's going to load the frames and it's going to give you a little preview. If you want to loop that, just enable looping at the bottom and press spacebar again. And that's just going to loop through that animation. Okay, so let's just run through this quickly here see if everything is looking good so let's say you make a mistake i'm just gonna pull this one further go to my live uh, or my active frame and i'm gonna have my hand in here somehow and accidentally i press enter and it takes a photo and now your hand is basically in the shot and that's obviously not what you want so let's say you want to delete that frame very easy just click on it and um, you can either right click and click on delete or with it selected just press delete on your keyboard and it's gone and um, then you can take that frame again so i'm going to press enter so let's say you want to duplicate a frame maybe you want this character to kind of stop there um, and maybe before he turns around or something you want him just to stop for about a second okay to do that you basically click on your last frame and if you hover with your mouse cursor just over the side or the edge you'll get that little yellow and black arrow just pull that and it's going to give you a number of how many frames you're actually duplicating it for. So I'm going to duplicate it for about 12 frames, which is one second. And um, now if we just preview this, if I just get my out point, I'm just going to pull that out point into there. I'm going to press space. And now I see he's going to pause there and the animation is still running, but he's actually just pausing. So now you can basically go ahead and you can continue your animation. So let's just click there. And now I'm going to make him so he kind of turns around. So I'm just going to slowly turn around, take a frame. Okay, and then you might want him to move back the other way. Okay, you can also use the slider on the side to kind of just zoom in or out of your sequence to be able to see more of your frames. Um, let's preview that quickly. I'm just going to press uh, spacebar. Okay, so that's pretty cool so let's say you're happy with your animation and you basically want to render your frames so there's this little button here conform click on that it's going to start rendering your frames and this will basically um, take your frames that you duplicated like from 13 to 24 and it will actually duplicate those photos as well it will save them so once you've done that um, i'm going to open up premiere pro to show you guys how to actually create an animation 
All right, so we are in Premiere Pro. I'm just gonna double click to import my uh, photos and I'm just gonna browse to that folder quickly. Okay, and you'll see there's a stop motion or the actual name that you've given your project will be in there. Um, and then if you go into that folder, you'll have your scene and your scene number or your take number, scene number and take number. And then if you go to the X1 folder, that's basically where all your high quality JPEGs will be. And you just need to click on the first one, make sure your image sequence uh, is ticked here at the bottom, click on import. That's gonna import all those frames. And then very importantly, you need to right click on that and go to modify interpret footage. And um, you'll see that this will currently be at used frame rate of 29.97, which is incorrect. We wanna assume this frame rate. And remember we set it to 12 frames per second in Dragon Frames, so set that to 12 and then click on OK. And now basically you can just pull this into your timeline and if we just zoom in here a bit and if I play through this, there you have the animation. Now you can basically see this is a very strange uh, frame size and if we go to sequence here at the top, sequence settings, uh, you'll see that my frame size is pretty big it's like a 4k it's actually bigger than 4k so we want to set this to normal hd which is 1920 by 1080 and i'm going to leave everything default just click on ok click on ok again to confirm that and now you're going to see it's actually going to crop in quite a bit so what you can do is just highlight your sequence go to motion and i'm just going to scale that down because obviously the photos that we're taking with a 5d mark 2 is pretty large um, so you can crop in if you want to not really going to lose any quality um, so something like that should be good let's play through that and that's how easy it is to create stop motion animations using dragon frame i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial give me a thumbs up if you did also remember to click on that subscribe button if you want to be notified of new weekly tutorials thanks a lot for watching